Alright, I've got to look at this um, whole concept of translocation, which people think is difficult. It's not, not as difficult as people maybe imagine, but anyway, let's have a look. So, when we um, make in a plant, when we have photosynthesis on the go, um, we make these, these products, the general term for them is assimilate. So we can talk about assimilates being moved around the plant. Um, what's basically made in, in uh, photosynthesis is glucose initially, but then that can be converted into all kinds of other things, uh, amino acids and proteins, uh, eventually, same thing I suppose, isn't it? Um, lipids, um, oh dear. Uh, and, and things like starch and so on. Um, what we're actually interested in here is sucrose, which is a disaccharide. Let's just sort of draw one here. Um, that looks a bit like that, I suppose. You've got glucose and fructose together, um, and that's a, called sucrose, that's our disaccharide. Um, the reason it's useful to have sucrose moved around, glucose is um, a very useful form of sugar, that's why we go on about it so much in biology. Um, but it's also used pretty easily. So if you're going to be trying to move things through plant cells and it's you're using glucose, um, the plant cells themselves might start using it as it goes along. You don't necessarily want that. What we want to do is um, move this glucose from an area where it's being made or released to an area where it's needed. And we don't want it to get used along the way. So by transporting sucrose, which is less usable by the plant, we avoid a lot of that um, problem. So if you've watched the um, little video I did before on gradients, that might be useful to, to look at if you haven't. Um, this idea of gradients, in this case what we'll be dealing with is basically three types of gradients. The first of which is going to be a concentration gradient. Um, so we're going to have a high concentration of sucrose uh, in one place and a lower concentration of sucrose in another place. Okay, And sucrose will move down the concentration gradient from high to low. It's a passive process. We maintain that concentration gradient by either adding more sucrose at this end so we're keeping that concentration high, or removing it from the other end. And that could be converting it into something else, converting it into starch, converting it back into the glucose and fructose, using it up, um, whatever it may be. So that's what we're going to try and do, maintain this concentration gradient. And we tend to talk of it uh, in terms of sinks and sources. So the sink is uh, where it's going to get used up at the low concentration, the source is going to be where we're creating or releasing our um, sucrose in this case, and it's going to go down that concentration gradient. Okay. Um, our sources are different colour. It. I'd rather put leaves, but it says in the book green leaves. Um, anywhere that can photosynthesise really is going to be producing sugar is going to be producing uh, sucrose. The storage organs, which are um, the tubers and the tap roots, so a tuber is something like a potato for example, it's a big store of starch um, that can be converted back into other sugars. Tap root, a carrot is a tap root basically, um, again it's just where the plant stores all its uh, food. Um, the seeds, seeds are also a source because um, you know, if you look inside of a seed any seed. Basically what you have is a little baby plant, a little plant embryo at one end, and then the rest of it is just a big store of food. That's because when this seed is underground, it can't photosynthesize, it's not a light under, underground, so it has to use this store of food, so it can release uh, the sugar. So that's the sources. Um, the sinks, which is a different colour so this stands out. The sinks are anywhere that are going to use up or, or take out, remove the sucrose. So um, the roots, because they're particularly active, um, pumping in nitrate ions, lots of mitochondria kicking around in there, um, which would uh, be using up the glucose that came from the sucrose. So we're basically removing it by, by getting rid of it. Um, the merry stems, which if you remember, those are the, the parts of the plant that are actually undergoing mitosis, so they're pretty active, a lot going on in there. Um, and anything that stores, so the storage organs and the seeds again. You might go, hang on, aren't they a source? Well, yeah, but you put them in there and then you can use them. So they can be both a sink and a source depending on what it's, what it's doing. When you're making seeds, they're a sink. 
when the seed is, is releasing the um, assimilates in order to grow the plant it's a source okay so what I'll do is I'll do both the the different roots here um, and I think I'll probably do them in, in two videos actually that's, that's so if we talk about first of all the simplast root uh, this one if you think of simplast and you think of cytoplasm same uh, same sound at the beginning okay so the simplast and this is the cytoplasmic root and this is the idea that um, between plant cells you have these channels of um, cytoplasm so that there's a root between um, there's, there's a direct link between the cytoplasm of one cell and the next so if we think, um, there'll obviously be the cell wall around here, but I'm going to ignore the cell wall. Let's imagine that our first cell is going to be, it doesn't matter which way around we do it, I'm going to draw it this way just because, this is going to be our source. So it's either making assimilates, sucrose, or it's releasing them, doesn't matter what it is. We're going to create um, a high concentration of sucrose in there, which is going to diffuse through the plasma desmata. Put that on for us. Plasma, um, there's Marta, um, and it will move into the next one. So we're increasing the concentration here, and of course that's just going to continue moving across. Okay, remember this is a passive process, it's just diffusion. What will happen here though at the same time is we've got the second of our concentration gradients, uh, sorry, second of our gradients, I should say. It's not a concentration gradient, it's a water potential gradient. We're going to have a high water potential and a lower water potential. Remember that um, water potential is basically highest when you've got um, pure water and it's lower when you've got um, sugar, um, you know, it, 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 when you've got solutes in there. So we can be drawing water into these cells. Okay, water's, water's just going to go through these membranes. It doesn't need to move in through the plasma, there's matter. The cell wall is permeable to water, it doesn't matter. This is going to start pulling water through, as would this cell actually, you know, we'd start pulling water into here. Um, and that could be from the xylem, whatever, as soon as we've got an increase in solutes. Now what this is going to do is create the third of our potentials, which is um, let's use a pressure potential. So if you imagine each of these cells, you know, if water is going into here, it's going to make the cells swell. And of course we've got a cell wall around the outside which is going to be squeezing, well, it, it, it's going to be resisting, sorry. So the water in the cell is, is making it turgid, but the cell wall is at the same time um, giving it that mechanical strength. So the more water we push in, it's creating a pressure gradient. There's a lot more pressure at this end, and so the water will tend to push through. So now not only have we got the diffusion of sucrose, We've got the water potential, which is drawing water in, and then the pressure is getting higher in here, which is pushing and helping to push this through. And this is what, when we refer to mass flow, what we're talking about here is basically water is just going into these cells and pushing along, and that's what's moving it. So those three processes are what's happening in the simplast route. We'll look on the apoplast route on the second video.